Today on The Grid, we're talking about camera gear and do we even need what's coming? That's our topic, and our special guest is Skip the Skip Man Cohen. Eric the Kuna Man Kuna is here. We've got some giveaways, we've got some news, we've got some weird stuff, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to Tamron-USA.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, powered all the right places. Go to Profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to Platypod.com. Hey, oh, here we go. Ready, everybody? <laughs> here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. Scott Kelby here, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Eric Kuna Man Kuna. Yes, that was smooth. Look at that. Ooh, that was nice oh, the way you uh, showed the, the Tamron thing. That's good. Tamron uh, makes some good lenses. And our, our good Speaking friend uh, is back on the, not, not his first time on The Grid, but welcome back, Skip Cohen. Skip, Skip Man Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, Skip. What can I say to that? Thank you. I it's do, good to be here. I this, know it's it's not. This may be my last time out of the house for months. Yeah, all of ours, yes, right? Yeah, so, yeah. what a weird time! Um, I, it's so weird uh, with this uh, coronavirus that just uh, the things that are happening. It's all happening so fast. So yeah. I don't know if you heard in the last hour and a half. Mm, I guess about two hours the, ago. About yeah. two hours ago, the the NAB show in Las Vegas canceled the show. Now the NAB show is the National Association of Broadcasters. It is one of the largest shows that goes to Las Vegas, period. 100,000. 100,000 people and the whole video industry. It's like the show for the video mm -hmm. industry. And it, it is a, it's a great show. It's, 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 we've been oh, to it. We've exhibited like a, there. It's like a gear dream. Oh, yeah. It is, it is a it's candy land, right? Gear. Yeah. And you, have you ever been to there? I have years ago. But, yeah. it's, it, but it is just what you said. It's one of the biggest shows in Vegas every year. Yeah. So you've got NAB, you've got CES. Yep. And yeah, one of the biggest shows just is. canceled. Now, right now, my editor, so my, and you guys have seen him on the grid here, Ted Waite, mm -hmm. my publisher, who's also been a guest on the grid, uh, Scott Callan, both of them went to London for the, they were going to go to the London book show. And after the book show, they go to the big UK show, the photography show. Both of them canceled. The photography show load in day was today. Yeah. And they just canceled. So can you imagine? All these companies, Ooh. Sony and Canon and Nikon, all these big companies, shipped all this gear to England to set up these massive booths. Staff has all flown over there in a whole nine yards, and they had to cancel the show. How heartbreaking, number one, for yeah, Future Publishing. They're yeah. a great company. We work with them, and they're, they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. I used to write, write for one of their magazines, and we work with them many times over the years. I've spoken at the photography show in UK. It's, it's one of the best photography shows. You haven't been to the photography show, have you? In the UK, no. Yeah. But we but we had somebody going for Platypod, and we yeah. pulled out of the show. And then I the know. show was postponed um, yeah, they are until September. It, they're moving, they're moving to September. September. So uh, and everybody's well, just and hoping that by then we can all appreciate be that. I mean, we all being in the conference planning, oh, the yeah. conference, putting on conferences, like to be at that stage, oh. I mean, that's just such a blow. I mean, that, that, that's hard. That is People hard. outside the industry or even in the industry, don't realize how labor yeah. intensive it is to yeah. put on a show oh, and the no. amount it's of work brutal. that goes into it and the scheduling yes. and the room oh, block yeah. and yeah. space. It's but once you get it going, once it goes off, it's great. You know? Oh yeah, so I, lo I love events, but man, I just hate to see yeah. what's happening to the event industry. Anyway, we're glad you guys are here with us today. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. One of the, our topic today is we're gonna be talking about camera gear, which is always a fun topic, but there's been a lot of leaks and things about what's coming, so we kind of want to talk about that. And, and we've seen some new gear being released, and we've got stuff to talk about with that, too. Yeah, and yeah. also we do have uh, uh, Skip. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of new gear. What is his name? Come on, Skip. spit it out. So before we get to our topic, this is before our topic because we're in love with this, this, uh, this thing I'm about to talk about. Uh, so the the new Platyball, right? We launched it here mm -hmm. on Kickstarter. Well, guys, it's coming down to what is the last four days? Four days. The last four days. Four days left. Now, I will say this. This is kind of cool. For those of you who read my blog, look at that. Is that a ridiculous number? 400. You guys were trying to raise 18,000. What are we at now? Well, that was the first benchmark. 
but y yes. Yeah, $436,000. Now, I actually got to see why it's $436,000 because this last weekend, I actually got to go shoot with one. So I've seen them, I've seen them in the booth at the trade show, and I'm like, wow, these look cool, they look great. And, and I've, I've been mm -hmm. seeing little peaks all throughout the development, and I've got to get my two yeah. cents in, like, oh, maybe you could try this or maybe, and, then, and of course, I mean, they're not just listening to me, they're listening to all these photographers. Oh, yeah. They put together a group of photographers that are kind of like their advisory board, and it, is, has, it has so many hands in there that have made this such a great product. But this weekend, I, I got to shoot with it. So I had both the uh, the Ergo model, which is just the gray standard. Mm -hmm. I really do like the gray. I love the gray. I love the gray. Anyway, it's the standard model. And then there is the Elite model. So the Elite model actually has this electronics in it for leveling. So it has an electronic leveler that, that so you don't have to worry about leveling your tripod and then trying to level your camera. You just yep. level your camera. And it's built in, it's very slick. Uh, and I was, I will tell you, I was a little skeptical of it at first. Like, I was a little like, I don't know, this is gimmicky, until you use it, and then you're like, oh, okay, okay, now I get it. So well, I think that's a big thing with it, is like, you know, we're talking about today, uh, about the gear, and, and do we really even actually need some of this stuff? Because, you know, that's a big thing that's coming out. The one thing about this one that's very interesting is, it's really redefining what a ball head is, and I think that's where a lot of the gear that comes out nowadays doesn't really, it's just kind of adding to what's already out there, and like maybe a little new feature, a little new thing. This is like redefining it, well, because like things like that pan head and the pan the, head. Yeah. and and being in an inverted design, like that kind of stuff is like. And then the locking mechanism, where you're able to kind of like one-handed be able to move it. Like these are things that like just rethinking the way a ball head works. That actually makes sense. Like well, that think is something about, different. Think about all the gear that we've seen over the years and how most of it has been evolutionary and not revolutionary. Correct. And by, by what Larry did, by turning it upside down, the fact that it is one hand operation, it really is remarkable. And then the fact that once it's leveled at the top, that's it. You're getting a nice even. In fact, you For said panos, that in that yeah. in that great video. Oh yeah, I did, did a video. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. I did a so. field report. So I don't do regular reviews, right? I don't do. So well, I mean, I do from time to time, but I'd more than that, I don't do like it's a five star, it's a three star. I just go out and I shoot with the gear and I give you my honest pros and cons. And I did have a list of pros and a list of cons as well. The cons were fairly minor. Um, oh look at this! A oh, shot look, of my there's rocket. A, there's yeah. a shot. Uh, I did not use a plenty. Yeah. So, anyways, there just you go. random shot. Okay, so why are we? Getting, I like that shot. Like, cool. Can we stop for a second? Why are we getting random shots like this? Uh. Here's why. <laughs> so, uh, part of our video crew is in New Jersey right now, uh, and they are taping a class with Tracy Sweeney. Yep. So, Tracy Sweeney is a beloved Kelby One instructor, an amazing uh, kid, uh, kids, family, babies, babies, families. She's callers. just an awesome children and family photographer. Yep. So we're up there taping a few classes with her right now. So we sent a very large crew up there. So who's switching the show today? Ron, who's usually in the booth working, but Ron is switching the show. Ron has got twitchy fingers, and occasionally Ron will hit a button just for fun. That's why if all of a sudden you see something show up yeah, on screen. Yeah, today is a wild card. Right? It's a wild card it's a day. It's a wild card day. Ron, but I'm, I know he's going to do well because, look, he's already got some lower thirds and things that yeah, showed I up mean, just he's, randomly. He's got it. So he'll, he'll be fine, but if something shows up, you can, just, you can make it a drinking game. Every time Ron brings up a graphic you weren't expecting, take a drink of water. So Don't anyways, back, in, back to our topic yes, there. Yes, back to our topic. I did so a video. on Monday on your blog, right? On Monday on so my blog. So if you go to scottkelby.com uh, on his blog, he, you actually did a video where you explained, like, yeah, like you did a field report. So you're out in the field actually using the product, not just talking about specs or quoting some <laughs> press release. You're yeah, actually using it. That's last yeah. week. Yep. You might want to just refresh that page. Yeah, there, up, yep, no, go, no, up, up. There it is, up, it was no. there. Well, that's, hey, that's, that, Julio. Julio, Julio. Polo. So look Julio at those shots. assists me on shots, he, for the last three years he's been my assistant. Yep. Julio is, is a great sports photographer. Yeah, he did he a is. whole thing on shooting uh, polo. Yeah. And he did great, his, his I mean, look shots at that, are great. Look at that one. Oh, oh, he's, oh, dude, yeah. he's shooting lights out. He's a really, and a really great guy, one of the nicest guys. And then and this one down here, keep on assistant. going. Yeah, keep, keep on going. going. This is a really nice keep motion shot. Going. Yeah. 
Oh, he's got so many going. Yeah, anyway, there's, but that's, a, there's even better ones. All right. Unfortunately, you're going to have to zip by that to get to our topic, but high five to Julio. All right, yep. keep going. Keep going. That's and all right. There, there we go. go. There's my field report. So if you get a chance, go watch the video. It's it's over on uh, scottkelby.com. Scroll back to Monday. And I went out and shot with it, and I gave you the pros and cons. And the pros are many. The cons are. But I have to, I have to tell you how it is. So uh, I went through all, all the things about it. And I totally get why everyone is like, why there's yeah. 400000 plus dollars invested in it. Because once you use it, you're like, this is so different. And now, Eric and I, yeah, everybody likes something different about it. And that's because it's not just one thing. Yeah. Eric and I are very big on the pan head. Yeah. So people buy these yeah, very, very so, expensive. It's so like, an, it's so like, it's just obvious once it, when, yeah, yeah, when you see it, you're like, why didn't everybody do this? But anyway, the, to be able to do panos and not have the pano go like down. Have you ever done that when you swivel your pan, like on a regular ball head, when you tilt it, your camera tilts down. But not with this one, it goes perfectly straight. It's mm -hmm. because he put the pan head on the top instead of on the bottom like every other one. So anyway, it's the inverted there are, design. There are so it's many level so cool. all the way across. Yeah, yeah. It is, and it's just wonderful. And you use it, you're like, I just, part of it is you go, I can't believe nobody thought of this stuff before. Yep. And yep. I think it's Definitely. because I would say, does the world need another ball head? No, there was plenty of ball heads. What the world needed was someone to reinvent the ball head yeah, and do that one. next level. So that's why it's taken off. The reason why we're telling you today is there's only four days left in the Kickstarter campaign. You say $50 if you get the uh, Ergo model, which is the gray one that is does not have the electronic leveling. And you save $76? Yeah. 76 on the Elite. But when you say electronic leveling, there's been some confusion over that. Do you notice how my chair keeps dropping here? Is no, this a oh, that doesn't I have no idea that what you're talking about. about. Dropping no, down. our seats are right. rock solid. On the Elite, the, lo the, the leveler is an indicator only. Somebody wrote in and said, well, what happens I don't want, if the battery dies, what do I do with my ball head? Well, they both operate manually. They yep. both have the same controls. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have the exact same it's design. It's an add-on. It's an add-on feature, which is great at night. It's also great when you want to level your camera and you can't see the back of the camera and you're not using the in-camera level, so... A realtor, for example, anybody doing interior photography is in that far back corner, and you're all set up so that you can see that it's level. So it's a nice, it's it's battery operated with an A23 that you can yeah. pick up anywhere. It's an A23. Four days, A23. You can get them at Walgreens mm -hmm. and yeah. CVS. Fifty cents a piece. Fifty I think. cents yeah. a piece. Boom. Anyway, that is so. That's not what our, our topic really is about. Our topic no. today is about we're going to look at some of the rumors and the things that are coming out and and. But I think it does work well with the topic because we're going to talk about things that we actually need or things that we actually don't need and, and that kind of stuff. And this is one of those things that, again, again, I think it's one of those products where when you, like you talked about, when you see it, you're like, wow, this was a reinvention. This was a revolution. It isn't just like evolutionary, like, oh, I guess the ISO goes up a little higher. Oh, I guess it has two card yeah, slots. Yeah, I got to tell you. Oh, I guess it does Eric, this. Right. When I read one of those ones that says the ISO now goes to 25,000, oh, yes. I'm like, really? I've never met anyone. I know that there's somebody out there, there's somebody there that probably really? uses 25,000 and everything looks like it's snowing in their photos. But, you know. That is, that is complete. It's a non-feature to most just, people. It's just like another thing to do. Yeah, it's, let's increase the. But make this it is actually 000. something that I feel like is yeah. reinventing, and it's that revolutionary thing. It's it's not you know it's it's not just the next step. It's not like oh it's a little better ball head. It's like well, a rethinking of the ball head. Yeah. I mean we've talked about and and you and I both have a very close friendship with Dr. T. Um, it the way his mind works. And the fact that, I mean, we call him Dr. T, by the way, everybody, because he is a full-time pediatrician. Yeah, he is a, a doctor. Larry. Not, they know him as Larry. They, they know do. him as Larry. Okay. Yeah. So you look at Larry and you look at that background and look at the fact that he's been a photographer for 40 years. Um, at the same time, doing, uh, having a career in medicine and then being able to think through, all right, what can we do that's different? Because Larry is all about finding solutions. Yeah, and and making things a little easier and better. And I love the fact that you've got one hand control; you can do something else with the other hand. Now we'll tell you you're something. You're setting your camera up, and 
Yeah. Yeah, like no a knobs, flare. You no can use dials. a flare in your other hand. That's right. So the interesting thing about Larry, because he, he is a, a pediatrician, and of course you ever talk to him, you know, he's obviously a brilliant pediatrician. But when he talks about photography, he gets a twinkle in his eye. Mm. Like That's he, great. Yeah. he really great. is such a passionate photographer and he loves this stuff. And of course the Platypod, which we're giving away, we're gonna give away one today. We're gonna give away a Platypod Ultra today here on the show. Uh, when he created it, I remember the first time I met him. In fact, we were all talking about this at dinner in Vegas a few weeks ago, the first time I met him and stuff. Um, he's just such a positive, mm -hmm. awesome guy to be around just as a person. But he, when he makes stuff, he, because he's a photographer, he's so committed. You talk about somebody that's all in on, he's just got to make the greatest product ever. And he's not going to sleep until it's the greatest product ever. I think that's why the Platypod has been such a worldwide success. I mean, everybody's got one now. If you don't have one, you might win one today. Uh, we're also going to give away, by the way, a copy of my Natural Light Portrait book right here. Mm -hmm. Giving away both of those. And we're going to give away a set of car keys. <laughs> we have a set of car keys that we're not going to give away. Skips, what's special about these car keys that we're not giving these away? These are... This Which is camera interesting. Did I, I never know. Is that one over there? It's that, that one, one over there. No, it's that one over it's there. Is that one over there? That one. All right. These are. This is uh, Ansel's Ansel Adams keys to his 1977 Cadillac. How which did is you just come a in, fun thing. How did you come into possession of his I Cadillac said keys. keys? Well, I also was in possession of the Cadillac for he a very short time. He was a repo man for many uh, years. That's right. We repossessed it from Ansel. No, no. Ansel's, Ansel's widow, Virginia, donated the car to the Center for Creative Photography in Tucson to help them raise money. Um, I was on the board at that time, and Ansel and Victor Hasselblad were good friends, and I was president of Hasselblad, and... We bought the car to help them, and then we sold it for charity. Um, I also have his Zone 5. Light. My chair just dropped again. There it is. Yeah. We so, also have his Zone 5. Okay. I have his Zone 5 <laughs> plates um, on the wall. Skip. So, can I tell you something? It's a setup. They, no, it's not a setup. <laughs> I'm going to be. They swear to me. Be on Juan in particular yeah. swear to me every week that the chair that falls is gone. Gone. They keep. They, it's in the what? dumpster. That's what they keep saying. They keep I guess they pull it out it. of the dumpster. All right. Yeah. We've had so that chair has been in the dumpster. I'm just saying. All You're right. the dumpster chair. <laughs> so anyway, those are Ansel's keys. That's wild. There and here's go. what most of us consider the world's first environmentalist. In his own handwriting, it was a little book. It was his gas mileage. He was getting nine miles to the gallon. Wow. In yeah. a 77 caddy mm -hmm. with a car horn that played 75 songs. There you go. And there you have it. That's a cool dude. All right. Oh. Uh, hey, we are going to take a break. I do want to, before we go to break, just want to mention, if you want to get in on the Platypod, excuse me, the Platyball from the folks that make Platypod, you can just go to kickstarter.com, but just go to platyball.com. It'll take you to the Kickstarter page. You can go, there's only four days left and the price is going to go up by quite a bit. So get in on it now like everybody else has. Don't be the last one to go, I never got my Platyball. I had to pay too much. Just get it now. So get it now like everybody else. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got some shout-outs. We're going to be talking about gear. We want to hear your comments. Uh, and also, while we're on break, it's not a bad time to go and tweet and say, go watch the grid live. They're talking about camera gear, you know, just saying. Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic. You need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a platypod. The Platypod is your go-anywhere, do-anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. 
If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church, or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The platypod. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. And we're back. Hey, we're back. Scott here with Skip the Skip Manco and Eric the Akuna Mancuna. And uh, I'm Scott. Anyway, uh, we got some shout outs, don't we? Oh, yeah. We got people turn, uh, tuning in from all around the world. We got uh, Murray saying hi from Ontario, Stuart from Scotland. Leslie from Woodbridge, Connecticut. And that's our only three viewers today, just three people. Yeah, that's who we got. Murray Stewart. We're just going to refer to you by name. So Mur Murray Stewart and Leslie, had the three of you hey. heard of this rumor that, that it, looks, it looks like pretty well, now I don't, I'm not giving you any insight. Info, we're, it's on the web. It's a rumor on the web from a reliable source that Canon is about to or going to release a 150 megapixel camera. I have heard this. A hundred and fifty megapixel. And I mean it's it's somewhat pretty reliable. Source. Yeah, it's a pretty reliable source, you know. Generally if you if it makes its way to Canon yes. rumors, they're pretty pretty good and they have good yeah. sources and stuff. So I gotta so imagine it is that probably it's probably coming. It's probably coming. Well, I'll tell you what, if they're saying hundred and fifty, at least a hundred is coming. Well, it could. What if it's 120? It's still. Yeah, it's but, still coming. But but you know what? This and they is, did talk about discontinuing okay. the uh, 5DS and the 5DSR, which would lead to. No, I think they did. This. They did. Yeah. It's discontinued. Yeah. So, so that would lead to this being way credible. Right. So yeah, that all kind of plays together. So the Canon 5DR is 50 megapixels. Yes. Now the big talk was this is the kind of resolution you get out of a medium format camera. Mm -hmm. Now, I knew a guy who was president of Hasselblad <laughs> back in the day, and now he looks like Wolfman Jack. Just, I'm not saying it, just, but you may know way, him. Way back in the day. Way back in the day. Anyway, but they were saying a 50 megapixel to, to rival those. Guys that are watching, Murray, Stewart, Leslie, the only three people watching today, do you guys need a 150 megapixel camera? I, I have zero use for one. Zero. Mm -mm. You, am I missing something? Now, now you could say, Scott, so much of my work goes up in Times Square at giant sizes that I, I need a 150 megapixel camera. But how many are they going to sell? I Do, just don't meet many professional photographers yeah, that even say guys, they would need that. Guys, let me know out like, there. Just let us know in the comments. Just, just you, tell me if you need 150 megapixel, tell me why. What do you now, think, Skip? Do you need 150 megapixels? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. In fact, I said if, if I'm below 140, I can't get anything. All right. Yeah. Nothing, True. nothing that makes usable. Sense. Nothing. Especially it, those four by six prints yeah, yeah. from CVS <laughs> yeah. Are, are so tech sharp. Edge to edge. Sharp. Edge, 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 edge,
Oop, years ago at Hasselblad, somebody came up to us in the booth and said, how many elements are there in a Hasselblad lens? And we had a salesman that had no idea, and his answer was, more than you'll ever need. Well, there's, there's your answer. How many pixels? More than you'll need. All right, how mm -hmm. many pixels? That's huge. Can I tell you how many pixels I think we need, honestly? I think 12 is probably overkill. Do you know how big a print you can make with a 12 megapixel camera? Right. Very right. big, I've made them, yeah. Yeah, you can make very... I mean, iPhone, like iPhone, way. I've made some great hey, prints out of an when iPhone. We were, when we had six megapixel cameras, and for a while that was like, ooh, six megapixels. Yeah, that was you know? huge. That was, I mean, like you're talking like Nikon D70s and stuff that were like, you know, six megapixels. We were doing 300 DPI magazine covers, crisp, clean, you know, eight and a half by 11 size-ish. Uh, mag it's not the exact dimensions of a magazine cover, but close. Um, you're printing, you were printing posters. People have been printing posters forever at 24 by 36 off a six megapixel camera. If you go to 12 megapixels, you still got more than you need to, to print. Yep. But so what they're saying is, if you have a 150 megapixel camera, you can just keep cropping and cropping and cropping and cropping and cropping and cropping and cropping. But let me tell you, so I, I've got a 50 megapixel. Yeah. It's not the same. No, because you're not going to get the same compression. It is not, not the get... same when you crop in on it. There is enough resolution to print, but yeah. the quality. Like if I'm shooting a football game, I'll just tell you straight up, and I got a player at the other end of the field catching the ball, right? They're in the end zone. And I have to crop in from this to this to make it a reasonable shot. It's not super sharp and crisp and dead no. on the money. It's, it's usable, but it's not... It's not what you want. It's, yeah. it's not the quality that you're looking for. So if I'm missing something here, and, and this is where it's going. I mean, you're seeing, look at the Sony cameras that look how high megapixel there are. I'm shooting a 30 megapixel camera right now, my EOS R, and I'm looking at the new one. Now, let's talk about that. I do oh want, boy. okay. So there, I, I guess- I, I'm, I'm sitting in the 24 megapixels. This is, yeah, yeah. 20, 24 megapixels That's is plenty, all right? So here's the thing. So Canon did actually confirm that they are making this. They've given us limited yep. stuff. It's supposed to go on sale in April, so I don't know what the big secret well, is. Well, but they are talking about supply chain and, and, and having yeah, stock yeah. problems. They're already seeing uh, that. Okay. However, yeah. what do they saying that one's going to be? 45, was it? It's Let's look it up. Expensive. No, not 4,500, 45 megapixels. Let's uh, go look it up. Yeah, but, no, I think but it is. But what's the big focus? I think it is 45. What's the big focus? It's going to have two card slots. I have two card slots in almost every camera I have, and I only usually put in one card. Seriously, I only generally put in one card. All right. Yeah. Hey, we have some comments coming in. So, um, read John's 40, there. 45 That's megapixel. That's pretty funny. Yeah. John says, <laughs> when you, he's referring to when you have 150 uh, uh, megapixels. Good to yeah. see that someone else is watching. Yeah. He says, take four pictures, change memory cards. Take four more, repeat. Uh, well, then you got to add, go to the store, buy another hard drive. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? People go, oh, well, memory is cheap and all and stuff. It, it is cheaper than it's ever been, but it stinks to have to change cards all the time and manage multiple cards and manage multiple drives and all that. It stinks. Hey, there's Steven. Hey, Steven. Yeah, Steven's saying uh, that many megapixels. You'd have to hold that sucker pretty darn steady. <laughs> and I'll say, I mean, that's what, do you imagine, like for Milky Way photography, with that many megapixels on that sensor, I mean, you'd be able to leave your lens open for like two seconds, three seconds. I mean, it would be ridiculously short, you know, time that you would need to be able, you could keep your lens open, it'd be ridiculous. At 150 megapixels, am I right that in the studio portrait session, you could also do x-rays of your subject? Yeah, you could do medical shots. Yeah, yeah. probably. Hey, um, probably. I don't know who said this, because there's no name, but it says, as an Olympus photographer, I'm excited about the new 150 to 400 with a built-in uh, 1.25 teleconverter. This will be an amazing bird lens. Yes, I agree with you. I think some of these new mid-range lenses at a, yeah. at a reasonable price, I think that's a very, but I, have you seen the prices of lenses today? Yeah. Go look up, Eric, yeah. what a 70 to 200 Nikon would be. I'm just, I don't know, just 7200 f2.8 if you want to buy one today. I thought they were expensive before. 
What's the Nikon? The, the Canon's, Canon's 1800. Uh, let's see. Nikon is 2021. 20, yeah, 2100 street price. Mm -hmm. Or Wait a minute. The new Sony, the Sony is $2,600. 2600 26 for, for one lens. I mean, it's a good lens. But what has happened to the, you know what, maybe, maybe, well, it doesn't really work. Because you know, like the printer game, right? You can buy a printer so cheap. I get where you're going. You can buy a printer for nothing, and then the ink is. I so last night I had to run to to. Yeah. I had to Lenses go the to to CVS last night to buy ink for my wife has an HP printer. We ran yep. out of ink. The ink cartridge was fifty six dollars. Dollars. It's a lot of dollars. And I bet the the printer cost the printer you was like eighty six dollars. Right? Yeah. No, if it was very inexpensive, like an eighty dollar yeah. printer. Maybe the camera. If you're going to charge twenty six hundred dollars for a lens, can we get the body for five hundred bucks? But they're not. They're charging a tremendous amount for the bodies. Did you find out what? Uh, how many megapixels that new? Yeah, forty five. Forty five. So forty five. Can I be honest with you? That's more megapixels than I won't even want to use. Twenty four. You're right. Twenty four. Twenty four. That's a lot. 24 is a lot of megapixels. I think so that gives you, you the latitude. You can get away with 12, but 24 is that good. That gives you the latitude that you could crop into that 12, right? Yeah. If you're at 24, but because if you crop in much farther than that, it's going to get into the situation you're yep. talking about. You're just going to yeah. degrade. You're going to sacrifice so much at a certain point, yeah. You know, and that's where you just don't want to be in. But that's where we just keep on the this megapixel game is weird. It's just weird. So. I haven't seen anyone that says I need that 150 megapixel yet. Not, not, not but anyone. But I, I definitely do agree with that. That these these lenses that are coming out in the that zoom range and, yeah. and that's where the ISO allowing a little bit higher of an ISO to clean ISO is helping because then Wait, you can if it's clean. If it's clean, a little higher. No, I, I but, said that. But, I said that but Eric, clean. Well, I think what we want in a, and and I would love. We don't to want five million. We don't need twenty five thousand. What we need is 800 to be clean yes. and 1600 to be clean. Yes. And and so right now 1600 is kind of my threshold. Now if I'm shooting on my 1DX, I'll go a little higher. So, you know what I would love? This is and this is happening in the video realm, and they need to take it over to the photography realm, and that is dual ISO. Have you seen dual ISO? No, so I have not. in the video realm, they're starting to like uh, Blackmagic has it on a lot of their cameras, where it's a dual native ISO. So what it's doing is it's allowing you to shoot at 100, or actually I think there's a 400 ISO native, and then they also have a 1,000 ISO native. So both those ISOs are the native ISOs, so you can actually set a higher native ISO, which is all you really need sometimes is to get a little boost yeah, a little with boost. your signal, you know, so you can kind of like, then you can shoot at 5, 6 or something, or, or for, for me, like I shoot at 5, 6, and it's just a little cleaner, you know? And I'm telling you, since I've been using those video cameras, having that dual native ISO is huge. I mean, that would be great for photography. It would be, or just make a thousand ISO it could really clean. It could, but usually that's what happens is you, you're having to, at any point, you're having to boost that signal. So having a, that native ISO, have that dual native ISO, it's really cool. Yeah. Still have not seen any comments from anyone that says they need a 150 megapixel camera. So, it makes me want to take a break. It just does. I just feel like at a point like yeah. this, we need to take a break. We're going to talk about gear when we come back, but we're going to start from a really low angle, and then we're going to slowly yep. pan up, and then we're going to go to commercial. It's just how it works. It's weird. It's I think that shot's shot at the native ISO. That's a 1,000 ISO. Every serious photographer needs an online portfolio. It's kind of like it's the thing, right? You don't have to have a printed one anymore, it's nice. But what's really critical is that you at least have an online portfolio. Everybody needs one. The problem is they're expensive. You gotta pay for them, you gotta sign up for them, and now you're paying another monthly fee. What if I told you, you don't have to do that because it's already included in your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. That's right, if you've got the Lightroom and Photography plan or the full Creative Cloud, you're already paying for a beautiful online website shoot a theme, you got a bunch of cool themes. In fact, take a look. You go to myportfolio.com and click on examples. They show you a bunch of other photographers and designers websites that are already there. And if you see one that you like, it'll even tell you what theme to start with. So you choose your theme, you upload your images, you add your text, you hit publish, 
and it's live. You're already paying for it, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. You can upload your images from your computer, you can go straight from Lightroom, you can add video, you can do so much. You're gonna be blown away at what you can do, and you're gonna be thrilled to know. It doesn't cost you a penny more than you're already paying. So it's included in your Creative Cloud subscription. I'm gonna show you how to unlock this thing. You can have it up and running tonight. So go catch my brand new class on creating your online portfolio using Adobe Portfolio. It's exclusively at Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back, Scott and Skip and Eric here, and we're talking about camera gear. Uh, and we, 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 post, we posed out to, to everyone watching, is there anybody out there that needs a 150 megapixel camera? Apparently this is going to be a very small market for this camera. Well, Guy, guy saying here in the comment, you know, Guy says um, 100 megapixels allows a single shot panorama versus stitched. So I mean, I guess that's where you're going is a single shot. But again, then I go to a single shot panorama single so shot. you can like print it on the side of the Empire State Building yeah. or something. So if you're so like, for six floors. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like and who's, hey, did I see Claire Jones in there? Yeah, Claire. Hi, Claire. I just want to say hi to Claire. I saw Claire but in the she comments. Is, she is talking about ISO. What she's saying with the ISO is she shoots wheelchair rugby at ISO 6400 in a poorly lit gym and then one five hundred or one five hundred to one eight hundred freezes actually perfectly, and that's where. Yeah, I mean, you want a, a high ISO, but but that's not even close. Like sixty four hundred ISO, I think with a lot of cameras is still pretty clean. Like sixty four hundred. Yeah. You get much higher than that, though, it starts falling apart. Right. Yeah. I mean, so that's where, yeah. um, you know, Lyle saying he needs a a. a hundred fifty megapixel. Lyle doesn't need a hundred fifty megapixel camera. So, Come on, I know Lyle. Lyle, so, you don't need a hundred fifty so megapixel camera. Why do you need a hundred? Tell us why. Yes. Tell us why. Right. Lyle's trying to pull a fast one. I think yep. I think Lyle should put a wink at the end of his. I need a hundred. But anyway, yeah. hey, no, I want to talk to Guy's thing the, though. Can we go back to Guy's yeah. thing? Yeah. So Guy was saying that hundred fifty megapixel allows a single shot panorama. Um, you can do a single shot panorama with a forty five. You can do a single shot panorama. Because what, okay, what are you going to print a panorama on? You're not going to print it on, I guess you could do a roll print. If you have, if, these are all big ifs, if you have a printer that's big, you need a big printer, you need to print on a roll, you could print your own roll. But most people are going to print on canvas. They're going to make a, canvases when it comes to panoramas are gold because they'll make a, a canvas pretty much any size you want, no problem. So. You could do that on an 18 megapixel camera. I do routinely do panos, long panos, six foot panos uh, on a 20 megapixel, 18 megapixel, 20 
or 30, no problem. I've got, and, and that's what I, when I give someone a gift, I like to give a pano. It's just my, I like, I like shooting panos, um, which also brings us up to another question here Lorraine asked. But uh, I, I think no, you do not need 150 megapixels to have a single shot panorama. You can do that. You can cut it out of a 45, no problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lyle just modified his comment, by the way. Okay. He doesn't need one anymore. He just, <laughs> wants, he just one. wants one. Uh, Lyle's comment says, okay, okay, okay. So I want one. Okay, now that, hey, I can... I can, I can get people, I yeah. I want one? Totally. I can see it. I can see and it. That's not really the question here. Do we need it, right? Hey, look what yeah. Brian says. Brian says, Scott needs 150 megapixels so he can do large detail prints of bug macro shots. On, de on dead trees. I, and dead trees. I cannot stand bug macro shots. Yeah. Just the worst. So Lorraine asked, and this is, I, I said this a moment ago, will the platyball, this is jumping back to what we were talking about earlier, will the platyball replace gimbal heads? For panos, yeah, Lorraine, yeah. I think probably. If you're buying a gimbal head to shoot panos, I think that the way it's set up, you're not going to need a gimbal head. Yeah, if, I mean, if you're tracking like a bird in flight yeah, or something like you're that, maybe a bird in flight, not probably as much. Not. I mean, you still could probably do it. You could certainly know? do it, yeah. But I mean, it, it's very, very smooth and things like but that. But definitely for the panos, definitely, yeah, I would replace yeah, I wouldn't, it. Yeah, I couldn't tell you with a straight face you need to go buy a gimbal head to shoot a pano. Or even a pano head, you can buy dedicated pano heads that are kind of similar. But uh, I think yeah, I don't think you're going to need it for panos. All right. So Craig says I'm shooting ISO 3200. I'm at 800 to a thousandths, I believe, in a college gym to shoot volleyball. I'm getting good results, but it's a bright gym. Yeah. All right. But Craig, wouldn't you love to shoot at 1600 or or have your 3200 be really, really clean. That's the key. So that's it's the key. Really clean. But, but our, th our problem is, Craig, and kind of what we're talking about here today is when, when a camera company makes their ISO, it was 25,800, and now it's 28,900. Who cares? Or the what, new one's like I, 3 million. Okay, Craig, I care what you care about. I want a clean ISO at 3200 so I can freeze volleyball. I don't, Skip, who's shooting at 25,000 ISO? Somebody in a very dark gym. How's that? It's a very dark gym. I, very dark. I will say, I shoot routinely certain shots at 25,000 or 51,000 ISO. Rocket shots? Yes. Only because they're up in the atmosphere and I'm trying to capture a bunch of light. And it's, okay, but, but that's that you're, so and you're, specific. That's and you're so also out at night. It's you're, like, you're it's at like night. this right here oh, uh, at night. Oh, hey. Can we can we look at some? Hey, can we just break for so, one second here? I want to show Eric shot a, a, the rocket launch this here week. Here you go, fifty one thousand ISO. Oh my gosh, fifty one thousand ISO. But it's only to capture that split second of one sixtieth of a second of the rockets. So you got on the top here, you've got the one rocket uh, boosting back, and on the bottom here, you got the other rocket going off into space. So they're interacting up in space. Well, that one sixtieth of a second shooting at fifty one thousand ISO. Yeah, you get something cool, but that's the only time. Do you that get I, some? Is it noisy? Not at the I mean, size anyone will ever see not, it. I mean, I, that's, that's full screen that's on a fifteen-inch laptop. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I need to go much more. Put it that way. Um, but you know, everything else. Let's look at some pictures. Like, it's like hundred ISO. All right, this is from this last week's so launch this is last of week's the launch. SpaceX. All right, this so. is. Can I say this is my favorite shot? Now he's got. You're going to see a lot of great shots, but I, I see every shot Eric takes. So I'm looking for something different. I thought this was kind of a neat this was scene neat. you yeah. don't see. Because a, a lot of the ones everybody likes are the moment of launch, right? Yep. When you see the explosion of fire and all. And those are all cool. But this kind of calm before the storm, I think, is, I, is my favorite yep. picture from this batch. But I've cool. seen the nebulas and all. And, then, and see, you can't. Well, I, like I mean, that. that's, a, that's a stunning picture. Yep. And that's like the nebula. nebula. And then here's one that I did where uh, we, so the Falcon 9 is actually named after the Millennium Falcon. So Elon named it after that. So we brought in the Millennium Falcon to an old launch pad at the Air Force and actually f photographed that with it. And actually, I'm really low there. I'm using a platypod. Uh, I am like on the ground really low, but I had to keep the, um, the Millennium Falcon uh, 2.2 feet away from my lens in order to keep that in focus and keep the background in focus all the same. That's so, a great shot. So yeah, so just had to uh, 
calculate that stuff out. And then there's like, that's the rocket going off, then shutting off the first stage, then shutting up or starting up the second stage. And then the, the curve up there is it boosting back to come land on land, the one booster, while the other one continues wow, into space. Wow, that's a cool shot. Yeah, and then uh, that's it. Like, you can actually see it's lit by the pad as well as lit by the engine. It's kind of like this split lighting, kind of calling these ignition shots, where it's kind of like still lit up by the pad, but it's properly right. exposed. You know, and the water just, shooting there. Yeah, interesting. And then something like that, where you're just getting like a lot of detail. So, nice. Yeah, cool stuff. I mean, love it. Nice that's shooting, where I'm shooting. Mr. High I will say ISO. this is every shot except for that nebula was shot at 100 ISO. OK, thank so you. So everything else, 100. The only time, only time, is when I do those nebula shots. All right, Thiago, and I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so I apologize in advance, says 150 megapixels is way too much. For me personally, 40-ish is the sweet spot as it allows some space for cropping and leaving some space. I really yeah. don't have, like, I, yeah. I, I want that 45 megapixel, but I want it for other reasons. I don't, I, none of the reason I want that Canon is the more megapixels. I'm no. I am fine with 30 is even more than I really need. I think I'm, I'm with Eric, 24. Where are you at with your megapixels? You don't care. I don't care. Skip just, he doesn't care. I, I want the 150,000. I, mean, I there, want to be the there, first one on my block. There's a reason that Apple has stuck with 12. There's a reason. Yeah, the it's like you talked about 12, it. Yeah. They stuck with 12 because like you talked about, that will cover 99.99%. Yeah. That's it. All right, Matt says, I had an Icon D810, which was 36 megapixels. I'm shooting mostly people. If there was any movement on either side of the lens, you could see that in the images, even shot at fast shutter speeds. You basically need to use the tripod all the time. So I switched down to the D500 and then to the Z6. Now the Z6 is Nikon's mirrorless, it's 24.5 megapixels. He says, plenty of resolution, plenty of tolerance for cropping. Yeah. Hey, I've heard nothing but good stuff about the Z6 and the Z7. Z6. I've nothing used that but great for stuff. rocket launches too. I, I tried it out and yeah. uh, it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. Uh, it's, we don't know the name here, but somebody said, as far as ISO goes, I agree. We need clean ISOs from 800 to 1600. That would be I the dream. What, if you, that, that would be the dream. That, if you could get really clean ISO at 800 to 1600, that would be huge. That would be a revolution. You and get I'm telling a, you, they, they're, they're getting this in video. We just haven't got it in stills, and it's that dual native ISO. I like, like the I, idea I of the dual native ISO. I just wish that that would come over to photography, because that's the thing is, if you could have... 800 to uh, 1600, if you could have 1,000 ISO be clean, I mean clean, as clean as 100, your other native, that would be revolutionary. It would be revolutionary. That would, it would, that would be. be awesome. I would actually sell gear and get that. All right. Hey, we're, we're going to jump on and take a, a break real quick. When we come back, we're all going to just think about Dave Clayton for a moment, for no particular reason other than Dave Clayton. He's Dave yeah, Clayton. Yeah, Dave Clayton. We're just going to think about him, and we're just going to ponder him. And, and think about in design. wonder what he's doing over. It's probably like 10 o'clock at night in the UK. He's probably having mm -hmm. biscuits and tea. Getting ready for that English breakfast. Hi there, Kelby One members, Corey Barker here with Master FX Training, and now, this time around, we are going to be talking about 3D compositing. Now, we've talked about 3D, we've talked about compositing, now we're going to talk about 3D compositing. And what we're going to be doing is creating custom 3D scenes from a variety of 2D sources. Now, one of the key factors here is that we're going to be using the principles of photography. We're going to be building a composite, we're going to be using depth of field. We're going to be using lighting effects, backlighting effects. These are all things that you would construct when you're doing a photo shoot. We're going to do it all inside of Photoshop. I hope you'll join me in checking out these newest courses on KelbyOne.com.
Hey everyone, I'm Mark Heaps and I'm excited to share with you my course on Kelby1.com, A Guide to Commanding Color. In this course, we're gonna actually look at the basic principles of color design and theory, the science of light and how it impacts our workflow in Photoshop and Lightroom, and also how to add that cinematic mood and design to our images with color grading. So if you wanna learn how to command color, make sure you check out my course on Kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back. Skippy, Eric E, Scotty. And yeah. uh, so uh, Gary. we're, hey, we're giving away a uh, ultra and a natural light portrait book. Uh, you know, if you make a comment, you're entered to win, and we're going to give it away to someone watching live because that's just how we roll. Anyway, uh, there were some more comments I wanted to go through here real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. Let's see. All right. Scroll down just a hair. Sandy says, when is Tamron going to make lenses for Canon mirrorless cameras so you don't have to use an adapter to attach them? Um, I don't know, Sandy. I, I, I am a fan of Tamron lenses. I use Tamron lenses. Eric's got a Tamron lens that he loves. I, I that used, uh, streak with the, um, the um, Millennium Falcon, that was the Tamron 15 to the 30. 30. That's the one that, yeah, mm -hmm. I've used the same lens. Tamron makes some wonderful lenses. Uh, and by the way, you probably noticed they are a sponsor of the show. I like Tamron before they, <laughs> before they sponsored the show, but I like them even better now. But all joking aside, just on the break, Skip leans over and says, you know, Tamron's making some really yeah, good glass. They are. Yeah, they are. Great glass. Not mm -hmm. only that, they've, they've changed the look of their lenses. Like their look, yeah. the actual physical slick, appearance, really good very, looking. very slick. Look. I mean, I don't know who does their industrial design. So but they just came out with Sony mirrorless this last year. That was a lot of Sony mirrorless, uh, mirrorless. mirrorless uh, lenses. So I imagine that the Nikon and the Canon ones are in the production pipeline, I imagine. How do we know? How can I, we find I, out? I looked, I mean, there's not really anything yet, but there's chatter about it. A little bit of chatter out there. A little there. bit of chatter. So we don't know, Sandy, I yeah. guess, is the, is the, yeah, you think as a sponsor they would tell us, but. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe we'll ask. We could um, ask though, they might let us. Yeah, might know. let us know. Um, what else we got here? Maybe. So, oh, yeah. We're looking at all the comments here. All right, so Matt, Matt Conrads asks, he says, I watched Scott's video about HDR and how, how low the noise is in an HDR pick. So, so Matt, it's, it's not necessarily that all HDR picks are low noise. Mm -hmm. It's when you use Lightroom's algorithm to put them together, which is also the same algorithm that they use in Photoshop's Camera Raw. When you do that, that's when you get that super low noise. They do do in-camera HDRs. There's a yep. number of ca cameras that already do in-camera HDR. Okay, Skip, did you notice how I pivoted to the single camera? Hi. Watch, I'm over here and I go, switch back to the main camera. We're, we're helping Skip, we'll skip with the camera. He's old school. So watch. Well, you never told me which so, camera to look at. Well, you're, not, you're supposed to know. <laughs> so like when you're talking here and you see yourself on the screen, go to right. one up, you turn to that That's camera. It. I got it. See the slow I'm pan? Oh, yeah. oh it's nice. Pan and everything. Nice. Nice I wish touch. I had something important to say, but I really don't. But anyway, well, you were this saying is about Academy they Award already material. They are already cameras that do in-camera HDR, including the iPhone. They don't have the secret sauce. I don't know what the secret sauce that Adobe has, but it's secret and it's sauce. So use the low noise. It, you know, if you're in that situation and you need to, to really boost the, the shadows where the noise would be, yep, yep. HDR and putting it together in Lightroom is, is magic. It is unbelievable the difference if you need to boost up your shadows. It allows you to, to push your images farther than you would be any other way. Now, when you're done, and I turn to the, uh, to the center camera, look how Ron, there who Ron's is. doing a pretty good job, wow, I yep. gotta say. He hasn't, he hasn't, yeah. the drinking game would be very boring. You'd be totally sober because well, he hasn't brought up anything the else. The second part of his question is the iPhone 11 Pro kind of does that already. So why can't they do that in a, in a camera for $2,000 plus dollars? And really, I mean, the reason being is the computational. Uh, Lightroom is computing 
in making yeah. those calculations. Oh, there we and, go. Ron just yeah. threw up at random. Yeah. Thanks. And, Thanks for... uh, <laughs> and really, at the end of the day, the iPhone has got a computer inside it where it's doing that same processing that Lightroom would do. Right, but it's, it still doesn't have the, the, uh, the magic sauce. Hey, Tess, Tess Kaufman says, I love my Tamron 28 to 75. How is the 150 to 600? I love it. I love it. I shot an old 150 to 600, and it was great. Yeah. So that's what I'm keeping my eye out. I need to get something for aviation photography. I need to get something oh, a little the new, faster. The new 150 to 600, which you haven't shot, right. is great. Kevin says, hey, if anyone finds a platypod with a Colorado ball head in Lofoten, Norway, let me know. I lost mine last week. Oh, uh -oh. I'm Kevin. Sure there's a story there. I'm sure there's a story. And I know it's not really pronounced Lofoten. I, even though I went there, I still don't know how it's exactly pronounced. We got gotcha. you. Steven says, uh, what's Steven's comment there? So Steven's saying, uh, I took a shot of a tree in Kauai uh, that simply refused to die no matter how much they have cut off it, just in case you ever, uh, I ever need to show it to Scott. So, <laughs> so Steve's got a dead shot. or Dead, dead tree, tree shot, shot, baby. Or, you know I love um, those. I, Jim Lyle, I got a lunch or, invitation here. Yeah. Thank you, Lyle. Lyle's got a lunch invitation for Skip. And then uh, Jim sure, is asking what lens on that Nebula. That actually was a 400 with a 2X teleconverter. Ooh. So you're losing a oh. two stops of light. Yeah, but, but you got to do it because you got to get close. Yeah. And you got to... Yeah, that's why the ISO gets boosted up a lot, but... You got to get close. So that's 50,000 ISO? 51,000, yeah. 51,000. Yeah. What camera? Uh, the original 1DX. That, I'll tell you what, though. The low noise and the red, that's a legendary low noise camera. Yeah, that camera from 2012. You know, that, that is, if you want to buy a camera with low noise, oh, it, yeah. go buy a used 1DX. It's a, the, the sleeper go, of the deal. Go find out what sleeper a, of a deal. Eric's really great at research. Go find out what that would cost. In the meantime, so Skip, I got to tell you, you have the I, nice, most nicely groomed beard I've ever seen. What's your secret? <laughs> grooming it. Oh, okay. There easy. it is. Wow, I didn't think it was going to be there that it easy, is. grooming it. It's just, wow. All right. Uh, but I'm going out afterwards, uh, before I get home tonight, I'm so going off see. to Norway to look for Kevin's so I think we should and, all and go to Norway and his platypod and ball head. So B&H has it used for $18.99. $18, now go to eBay. All right, so they have $18.99 for one of the best low noise. So if you're a sports photographer, uh, Claire, I'm talking to you. Wait a minute, I think Claire shoots... Nikon, if I remember, but she calls it Nikon because she just doesn't know any better. Yeah, there's there's one by it now. It's just a joke. There's Love one you, Claire. Buy it now, fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, buy it fourteen ninety nine, thirteen eighty eight. Yeah, guys, you don't know. It's what is it? Twelve frames per second. Yes. Super low. One of the best. Low, it megapixel. is the best low noise camera. Eighteen megapixel. So yeah. more than enough. And it, I mean, you hardly buffer because, again, 18 oh, megapixels. Oh, the buffer. Well, the buffer's huge, too. Yeah. You can just go ding, 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 ding. On, on a JPEG, you can just hold it down yeah, and forever. shoot forever. With RAW, I think you get 44. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. would never do that. But yeah. anyway. But so you can get like, yeah, like that is almost the, 50 images. Guys, that is the sleeper deal of the year. Oh, I have two of them. One DX's incredible deal. Oh, and hey, by the way, want a sleeper deal? I'm selling on eBay my 200 to 400. So it's a 200 to 400 Canon lens, but, F4 but, but with a 1.4 tele the tele extender built, built into it. in. I dropped the price because I want to sell it. I don't use it. Uh, it's in it's outstanding condition. It has two little tiny smudges. One of the smudges is where you screw the little thing, the, the lens on, you won't even see it. They're minor, minor stuff. It's an uh, awesome lens. And I got it at a screaming deal on eBay. Uh, where is the other smudge in the middle of the lens? Uh-uh. Where's, no, no. where's the second screen? No, it's the, it is sharp, so sharp. It's, it's an incredible lens. Anyway, I want you to have it, but I want you to buy it. Aviation, bird, all that good stuff. Anything you need long and, and uh, you know. Rockets. Ro <laughs> rockets. I know a lot of you are shooting that. Eric says, a different Eric, not this Eric. Yep. Eric says, not only would dual ISO be great, but redoing classes that are more than five years old, for re but redoing classes that are more than five years with Adobe products and contracts releases would be great. We're already working on that. So we've got, uh, we're working on a class right now yep. on 
because the, the U.S. government changed all the copyright all the contracts, and stuff, yeah. and we are working on all of that. Yeah, so, so we have a new uh, copyright class. You got a new out. copyright class. And you know what our, yeah. well, sure, I can't give away our, we have a thing that makes it extra cool. I can't give it away, but mm -hmm. anyway. All right, we've sadly run out of time. We have some winners, though. We have some wieners. Who won the platypod? If you're out there living life and I'm sitting there watching us and your name is Jennifer Provost, Jennifer, good news. We're sending you a platypod ultra. See how it's out of focus? Watch. Now, now it's, it's in. in focus. That's called your focal plane. That's your focal <laughs> plane. I'm on a focal plane. Oh. Uh, that crazy one. All right. Who won the book? I think uh, Glenn Hewitt did. I think Glenn did. Say hi to Jennifer Love for me. Anyway, you won the Natural Light Portrait book. And as for Ansel Adams' keys, I'm not giving those away. I can't believe you have them. I have them. I know. And I have his rear license plate. You stole it off that car, oh, didn't you? I took it off the car. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Oh. All right. So, uh, Skip, where can people go learn more about you? Um, everything I write is on skipcohenuniversity.com, uh, Skip Cohen on Twitter, Skip Cohen on Facebook. And if you're interested in anything related to Platypod or Platyball, it's skip at platypod.com. Yeah, so you're working with the folks from Platypod? I am working with the folks at Platypod. Some of the greatest having, folks on Earth. And just having a blast. They are. They're very, Speaking very cool. Speaking of Platypod, they got that platy ball. Yeah, did we mention they have a platy ball? Yeah. No, really? What does it do? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Go to Platy. If you want to get on that four, Kickstarter. Now it says days three left. days to go. This is not oh, good. Oh, no, 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 no. my God. Remember, Remember when we started? launched it We launched it right here. So we launched it on the show, and it dropped by one day right now while we were that's here. That's where we were here. Oh, you're right. Because that's 57 that's days ago crazy. today. Yes. Leaving three days left. All right. If you want to get it's only three days. Time is good. <laughs> going quick. If you want to get one, go to platyball.com. It'll take you to that Kickstarter page. Eric, where can people go see your stuff? Just Eric Kuna. So E-R-I-K-K-U-N-A. It's ericuna.com, ericuna on Instagram, ericuna on Twitter, Eric, E R I K K U N A. I know that's where your rocket shots are, but where are your close up macro shots of insects? Uh, that and dead is trees. on uh, deadtrees.com. Deadtrees.com. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, everybody. And we got to give a hand. Let's give a nice hand to Ron. Oh, look it. And there's Juan Alfonso. Ron in, in the booth today doing a, an outstanding, semi outstanding mm -hmm. job. Yeah. And oh, let's we got to bring up Juan again. Juan's Instagram, which is the most important of all. Underscore. Underscore. Do not forget the underscore because there are many Juan Alfonso's out there, but only one. You want the original. You want the original. Don't fall for an imitator. There's also the Speaking digital the surgeon. Original. The digital surgeon is up in uh, Connecticut He's right now, the, being Tracy digital, Sweeney. being digital, dancing, dancing a lot and getting low when he dances. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get low. All right, that's me. If you like stopping by, that oh, that's my portraits one. Yeah, I don't or you post. Just go to Scott Kelby. Chair. Just go to get, Scott Kelby. You get the yeah. other one. Get the other one. Can you hit the other one there? So uh, uh, yeah, there's the back of Rachel. Uh, there we go, right there at the yeah. top, right there. That's it. Yes, that one. Yeah. Same picture, go. different stuff. So that's like my landscapey stuff. Ooh, look at that. And you had a right there in, the in that church shot. I'm sorry? You had a platypod in that church shot. I did have a platypod in that. If you go through, yeah, you'll see. I, and you can't tell, but there's a platypod to the next shot, too. That's a platypod. Look at that low, getting low. Now click it again. Platypod right there bam. in the snow. Platypod. Look at click that. it Mount, again. Mount Rundle, I believe. That is a tripod. Shh, don't tell anybody. That Every once in a while I use the one. Faroe Island. But can I tell you a story about that shot? So as I'm taking that shot, my buddy has a very expensive gitzo. Mm -hmm. He pulls out the leg and it comes completely off. Completely off, all the parts fall from inside. So we're right there, we're all excited and all, like the fog clear, we're gonna get to shoot. All of his stuff falls on the ground. He looks at me like this and he goes, it's okay, I have a platypod. He had a platypod in his bag. He played a platypod max. There's posts, he takes it out and puts it on the post. Did the whole shoot. There you go. Because you can just stick it in your shirt pocket. He had it just stuck in the side of his camera bag. Yep. 
platypod. Always have a platypod. To the rescue. I say plata, you say pod. Platypod. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to Ashley <laughs> for, for monitoring the comments. And uh, Ron rocking the switching, it's called, Ron. Switching. Catch mm -hmm. you guys next week. You yep, know who might be here? Maybe Vanelli. You never know. Whoa. 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 That's Drop big. the bomb. That's bomb. That's big. Bomb. Bomb.